Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to part five of our six part conspiracy take the crown full set review. Today we're going to look at all of the green cards and a couple multicolor cards. If you've been watching the channel this week, you know we've been working our way through the color pie. We looked at white, blue, black, and red. Tomorrow we'll wrap things up with all the colorless cards in the set. Now, if you've been watching the videos this week, you're probably already aware, but I started putting some links to Amazon products in the descriptions below, and these are links for products that are relevant to whatever we've been talking about. So this week has been conspiracy. But if you go through one of those links and make a purchase on Amazon, a portion of that purchase will come back to the channel to help support what we do here. A lot of folks have been asking, how can I help support the channel aside from Patreon? This is another option. So of course, Patreon is still an option too, uh, but this is just another thing you can do, especially if if you're going to purchase cards anyway and if you can find a good deal on amazon then it go through that link and it really helps us out we really want to get some better equipment and make even better videos in the future uh, so having said that thank you for your consideration and even looking at that and let's get on to the real business at hand and that's the set review now green in general feels very powerful in this set there's some amazing reprints you see a couple on the screen right here as we're talking but we'll talk about those among others too and there's also some really strong new cards i've been very impressed with the lineup green has this time around i think black's very powerful in this set i think green is also very strong and green may have the most cards that you're going to want to take into say commander or even move into your cube now, having said that, let's quickly talk about the archetypes green fits into. I think the most obvious one is Gruel. You have big creatures, monstrosity is linking both of the colors together. And with the ramp in green, it's a very good color to play well with monstrosity. There's also a little bit of melee in green, so it does work well with Selesnia. Now, Selesnia is a little more about going wide, and you're going to find certain cards in green that are smaller, cheaper to cast, that do fit into that melee strategy as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, but really, quite honestly, if you draft some green with any of the colors, you're going to find some value there. The rampant green is very strong. It's going to help any of the other colors enable what they're trying to do. So don't feel like if you start drafting Gruel, for example, and you feel like red got cut off, it's not the end of the world. You could do any combination of colors. Simic is still strong as well as Golgari, for example. Definitely will still get a very, very playable deck. Now let's move into the individual cards. And we're gonna start off with Natural Unity. This is a green conspiracy. This is at the common level. And this is part of a cycle. We've looked at the other four cards earlier in the week. They're all similar in the way that basically you have to choose a creature name and the card can interact with that particular creature name. So the first time you use it is basically a trick. You flip it over and you're able to use it on the fly. After that, it is out, people can see it, but you can still use it. Uh, this one's all about building plus one plus one counters on the creature. So you can either link this to maybe a creature with evasion because you know it's gonna have a better chance of getting across, or you can link this to a creature that you have multiple copies of in your deck. Maybe I drafted three of a certain common, I might get extra value by naming that creature, for example. I could even take this card if I'm not playing green and just put it upside down in my command zone and use it to bluff. It's just one of those cards that it's not like a first pick or second pick, but later in the pack, if there's nothing else to pick, you grab this and it doesn't hurt anything. It's just upside, basically, whether you're in the color or not. It doesn't cost you anything. It's not going to take up a spot in your deck if you decide to use it. It's just a little bit of value. Next, we have Animus of Predation. Uh, this is a 4-4 four, for four, 5, which is maybe a little weak feeling for green, but hold on because it gets a lot better. <laughs> when you draft this, you get to draft it face up, which first off is advantage on its own. It's showing everybody at the table, hey, by the way, I happen to be picking up some green. <laughs> now, at that point, as you continue to draft, if you see a creature that has one of the abilities listed on the card, and you can see there's quite a few there, you can decide instead to basically exile that card from the game and it steals that ability for this creature. So if you do this to a flying creature, then this will get flying. First strike, double strike, death touch, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, reach, and vigilance all behave the same way. Now, the only thing you wanna think about as you're doing this is, am I exiling a creature that's maybe good enough for me to pick? 
Or am I exiling a creature that's maybe not even in my colors? That's where you really find the true value here. You're basically taking a good pick away from somebody else, making this pick better. You also want to make sure you're leaving yourself enough good creatures to play as well. If you get a little too crazy with this, you may find that you might have enough creatures when it comes time to build your deck. So, of course, be mindful of these things. Uh, but for the most part, this is a really cool creative card. And I love the fact, again, it's another card that makes you think differently about the draft. Now I'm thinking about taking things that aren't even in my color to make this card better that's pretty cool borderland explorer this is a very simple card that does one of the things that conspiracy is really trying to do now if you've been watching the other videos i mentioned this before but basically conspiracy is all about expediting gameplay making sure folks can get the mana they need they get extra card draws they're getting very economical creatures there's mechanics that encourage attacking, and they're trying to speed up the game a little bit. The old conspiracy a lot of times would end with people getting decked. The design of this set is really about trying to help these games finish out naturally. And this is a card that helps with that. It does a couple things. First off, you get yourself a 3-1 for two. Green doesn't see a whole lot of 3-1s for two. There's actually another one in this set, which is a reprint we'll look at later. Uh, but this is an example of a more aggressive, smaller green creature. Feels a little more like a white creature in that regard. And this does play very well with Selesnia cards, for example, because white, of course, has melee, and this plays well with those type of mechanics, small, cheap creatures, right? On top of that, this helps everybody at the table fix their mana. So everyone has the choice now when this enters the battlefield, if they want to pitch a card and go and search up a basic land card. So this way they can fix any issues they have with their mana or their color base. Now this is going to be a better card for you if you're going really deep with colors. Maybe you're trying to play four colors or something like that. You might get more of an advantage than your opponents get. That's gravy on top. But even if that's not the case, there's still some advantage to be had here just because you're still getting a 3-1 for two. It's a nice little beater. So it's definitely playable. It's a good two drop for green for sure. Color of the Untamed. First off, I want to say this art is incredible. I mean, a tiger looks photorealistic. Amazing job. I really like the art direction of the set in general. Fantastic. This card, even if I never plan on playing it, I'd want a copy in my collection just because it's so beautiful. Uh, amazing job. Uh, beyond that, the card is also actually pretty exciting. Uh, you get a 2 4 4 4. That's all right, fine for green. And on top of that, though, this ability is actually very strong. So First off, it's another one of those Draft Matters cards. So what happens is, before you start the game, you're going to decide to exile a creature card that you drafted from your deck and link this basically to this card. And then when you do get it out in the battlefield, you pay X, which is the creature's converted mana cost, tap it, and you get a token of that creature uh, placed onto the battlefield. That's actually kind of awesome. <laughs> so look at it this way. Even if you got rid of just a 3-3 vanilla creature and you were able to pay four and get a three three every single turn that becomes nuts very quick you can run away with the game just with that ability alone but then there's other creative things you can be doing like enter the battlefield effects will come into play here the monarch taking the monarch token back is actually a pretty interesting concept here because this is one of two cards in the set that will allow you to do that at instant speed so somebody plays a card it gives them the monarch token you can then go ahead and tap this Put your token into play that also takes the monarch token take it back denies them that card draw very interesting concept to be able to repeat an effect like that over and over again so there's a lot of power to be had here now granted this is a card that only works in a draft situation so the conspiracy draft is a great place for it but i gotta wonder how powerful this could be in a cube draft as well can you imagine some of the crazy cards you could link in exile with this thing that you could just play multiple copies of as long as you had the mana right you probably think of stuff all day long i mean even if you had like say i don't know a tribal merfolk element in your cube Cube, and you could link this to Lord of Atlantis and just keep plopping down Lords of Atlantis all the time. I mean, this could get out of hand like really fast. So this is a fantastic card. Just one of the new cards for green that's very powerful. Domesticated Hydra. Now, this is a nice beater for green. It's at the uncommon level. There'll be a few of these going around. Again, amazing art. I just love it. It's kind of tongue in cheek. Great flavor text too. Uh, but you get yourself a 3-3 three, three for 4, and that's fair enough. And then later in the game, when you have expendable mana, you just pay 3 green and then X, and this thing gets X plus 1 plus 1 counters and gets trample. Great beater for green. 
Entourage of Trust. This card's all about getting and protecting the crown, right? You play this thing for five, you get a 4-4, which for green is maybe a little underwhelming, but at the same time, the fact that it can block two creatures and give you the Monarch token is nice value. 99% of the time, you know you're getting a card draw at the end of the turn, and on top of that, this card's going to help you protect that token. Maybe you can keep it a little longer, get some more value out of it. Fang of the Pack. Here's a melee card for green. There's a couple of them, and obviously it will play well with the red melee or the white deck with a lot of small creatures, uh, and this is another good beater. Cost six. It feels a little expensive at first when you think it's a 5-3. However, it does attack in as a 6-4, and it gives something else melee, which could potentially matter too, to just kind of snowball that effect a little bit and start attacking multiple players. I really like the card. Again, at the six drop spot, you probably don't want multiples of this necessarily, but one of these could be pretty effective. Next we have Leovold's Operative, and this is another Draft Matters card. Now, stats-wise, this is a fine creature. 3-2 three, for 3, that's very, very playable. But what's really intriguing, of course, is that ability. So we've all been there. You've been in the draft where you get past a pack, and you look at it, and you're like, wow, there really are like two cards in here that would be perfect for my deck. I hate to pass them. And I know that either one that I take, the other one's not coming back. It's just too good of a card. This allows you to just go ahead and take that second card. Now, the downside being, of course, you don't get to take a card in the next pack, and you don't know what's coming, so you could be giving up something really good, but you are at least getting to look at that pack, and that information is still very valuable and useful as you continue with your draft. Having said that, what's kind of intriguing about this card is you potentially could just draft this thing and not even be in green just because you want the opportunity at some point to take two cards out of a pack. But if you are in green, and you are planning on playing this, and you never pull the trigger on the effect, at least it's still a 3-2 for 3. And there's times that might happen. You just might never come across a pack that you really want two cards from to give up the next pack. And if that's the case, it's definitely not the end of the world with this card. So very good. Again, another card that really makes you think about how you draft. It's awesome. Menagerie Liberator, and here's another melee card for green. This is the second and last one we'll look at, uh, but this is a 3-2 Trampler with melee. It's probably not really good if you're in like the Gruul deck with a lot of big creatures, but this does shine a little bit more in, say, the Selesnia deck, for example, where you are playing with a lot of small creatures, and you could get some value out of this between the Trample and the melee. And you do have to remember, you're paying four, but it, again, it attacks in as a 4-3 Trampler. It's pretty decent value. Orchard Elemental. Uh, this is maybe my least favorite of the Council's Dilemma cards. I really like the Council's Dilemma cards. This one feels a little underwhelming to me. It's not horrible by any means, don't get me wrong. But at the six spot, there's a lot of really good six drops in green. You're going to see that as we go. Now, a lot of them are, are rares, so you're not always going to see them. And having one of these at the six spot is not the end of the world if you just need something higher in your curve. Uh, but it's not super exciting to me. Here's why. I play this for six. I get one of the votes, so it's basically going to be a 4-4. Now my opponents are going to vote. More than likely, they're probably just going to give me the life. So I'm getting a 4-4 and I'm gaining some life. Uh, it's not bad for the cost, but the 4-4 doesn't have evasion. And even if I'm lucky, it's a 6-6 without evasion, which is a little better, but not a lot, especially if somebody just gives me the counters because they happen to have a removal spell in their hand, right? That's probably the only reason they would do it. So I don't know. It just feels to me like you're not going to get a ton of value for what you're putting into this thing in the long run, um, which, like I said, it's not unplayable. It is a common that's a six drop. So if you're looking for something in that slot, it's there for you. Uh, but I think you're going to find as we go, there's a lot of better choices that could potentially pop up. Here's one of them now, it's Regal Behemoth. And this is a rare, it costs six. So granted, unlike the last card, you're not gonna see it that often. But when you do see it, this is the type of card you want in your six drop as opposed to the last card we saw. A uh, five five Trampler, that's wonderful. It also gives you the Monarch token, which almost guarantees you a card draw. And then on top of that, whenever you have a Monarch token, your lands produce an extra mana of any color. Yeah, sign me up. This does everything. It's a nice beater. It gives you card advantage. It lets you ramp. It lets you fix your colors. <laughs> uh, this is an awesome, awesome card for a lot of decks in the limited format. I think this will also be good in Commander. It brings the Monarch token into Commander. It's another way to ramp your spells in that format as well. And another good cube card too. 
Savala Heart of the Wilds. This one's a mythic, and this is very strong. Uh, they gave Savala a great card again this time around, and I feel like this is a fantastic ramp card, maybe one of the better ones I've seen in a while. And at Mythic, it's not going to show up a lot, but when you are able to open a pack and get this, you're going to feel really good because you're going to be able to drop this down for three. And that first ability in the Conspiracy Draft anyway is probably going to be relatively randomized. At different points of the game, different people are going to get to draw a card. I mean, if you're playing Gruul or something, you might have a little bit of an advantage with some of the larger creatures, but, you know, it's okay. Sometimes your opponent's going to draw off it. The part that's really exciting about this card, though, is that second ability. You pay one green and tap this to get X mana in any combination of colors where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. That's pretty amazing because that just lets you ramp it from one thing to the next big thing to the next big thing to the next big thing. Especially if you're playing red, there's a lot of good choices. And as we've seen, there's a lot of monstrosity creatures. So there's just a lot you can do with this mana to just really run away with the game fantastic card and it's legendary which is important too this card will be great in commander i could see this as a commander and really let you ramp into some crazy stuff in a format like that and speaking of formats with crazy stuff another really good cube card too aside from that could it make it into say legacy i feel like it could now i'd have to test it a little bit and kind of see how it goes but i feel like maybe in the elves deck this would be another option to ramp into things like crater hoof behemoth for example and i do think there's a potential for it there. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Savala's Stampede. Savala's getting actually a lot of great cards in the set. Here's another one with her name on it. And this is another fantastic six drop. It's a rare, but it's another great green six drop. Now it's Council's Llama. Here's the only point where this card can be a little bit awkward. Now, when it comes time to play this, if you top deck this with no cards in your hand, it's not going to be quite as good because it's just going to allow your opponents to say, okay, play a permanent out of your hand. <laughs> oh, you don't have one? Too bad. But at the very least, you're still getting a creature out of your deck, even if it's random, out of your deck onto the battlefield. And in a lot of cases, that's still going to be worth it, especially if you have no cards in your hand. It is giving you a little bit of heat. Maybe your creature's under three lands. This is going to help you get to it a lot faster. That's actually kind of cool, but where this obviously will really excel is if you have some cards in your hand, your opponents are going to have to make the decision to either let you put a permanent from your hand into play or to go randomly to your deck and find out what's next that goes again right into play. Two very powerful effects. And remember, you get one vote too, so if you do have something great in your hand you really want to get out, this will help you do it. There's just so much value to be had with this card. It's huge. Granted, sometimes, rarely in certain situations, it might not be as good as others, but when this is on, this is going to be really on for you. Fantastic in the draft. This is going to be a really cool commander card. Watch out for this in commander. I think we'll see tons of play there, and another really good cube card, too. Splitting Slime. Here's our last new green card that we'll be looking at today. The next group will be reprints. Uh, but this is another really cool one. First off, you pay five for a 3 3. Okay, that feels a little underwhelming for green but that ability is awesome because hopefully you'll play your six land next turn and then you'll make this a six six and you'll get another one of these and the next turn you can make that one a six six and get another one and next turn you make that one a six six and get another one as you can see this really wants to be part of the ramp strategy as well i mean imagine having like savala out and just being able to ramp into more monstrosity with this thing it would be incredible if your opponents don't deal with this card you're running away with the game you're just eventually going going to take over with these ooze cards and it's really awesome uh, again this is another card that will cross over well into commander as well as cubes really like the design here too all right let's move on to some reprints now green has got some heavy hitters for reprints we saw some big ones earlier in the week with show and tell but we're going to see some huge ones here you want to start off with a great one beast within now it's an uncommon i do like the art they chose for this one though i will say that this is maybe one of the best green removal spells ever printed it gets rid of target permanent and the exchange is sure the opponent's going to get a 3-3 creature i mean keep in mind you could also use this on yourself get rid of an extra land to get a 3-3 creature but most of the time you're going to use it to get rid of a planeswalker you're going to use it to get rid of a land at three mana cost you're going to use it to get rid of a problematic artifact or a real big creature and exchange it for the 3-3 token it's so versatile this card is amazing i'm really happy to see it reprinted here it's going to put more copies out there in the wild for players because you know this is another card that will cost you a few dollars if you're trying to pick up copies this hopefully will bring the price down a little bit 
Berserk. Here's a huge reprint. Now this is another one that's like a Eternal Masters level reprint. A little bit of history with this card. Originally printed in Alpha Beta Unlimited as an uncommon. It was only reprinted one more time after that and it was in From the Vault, the second From the Vault, Exiled, which was way back in 2009, so it's been quite some time. It was of course a foil there. Uh, this is the art that they use from the From the Vault. Uh, here of course it's a mythic and if you're trying to pick up one of these cards from either Unlimited or From the Vault, it's going to run you about $9,500. If you're trying to pick up the beta, it's going to run you about $200. If you want an alpha, it's going to run you about $250. <laughs> so this is a very financially big card, much less the power level. And power level here is phenomenal as well. If you've never played with this card before, try it out. You'll love it. First off, if you just use it in a straightforward way, you attack in with your creatures. Before combat, you get to double the power of one. It also gets trample. You just get in there with tons of damage. The downside being you do have to destroy the creature at the end of the turn. However, the reason why this really shines in a multiplayer format is you can use this on someone else's creature. So let's say one opponent is attacking another opponent. You go ahead and berserk one of their creatures. That second opponent takes a ton of damage and then that first opponent loses their creature. It's basically removal at that point. And even in the old days when you played with this card one on one, there were times that this card was used as green removal. You might have to take a hit, but you got rid of a creature you couldn't get rid of otherwise, and that sometimes was worth it. Uh, this card is just so versatile, it's just so amazing, and it can do so much damage out of nowhere. Uh, huge, huge inclusion. Love the fact that they went this far back and pulled this reprint out. Again, it feels like an Eternal Masters level reprint, and yet it plays well in the world of Conspiracy. Phenomenal. Speaking of Eternal Masters level reprints, this could have been in there, Birds of Paradise. This is a card that saw tons of reprints in the early days of Magic, probably about a little bit more than halfway through the life of Magic. This was just a staple that got reprinted all the time. <laughs> now because of that, it's not a super expensive card, but it's not super cheap either. I mean, if you want a revised or fourth edition version of this card, which is the least sought after version with the white border and such, you'll be paying four or five dollars for it. If you want a nicer black border version, like say the Ravnica version, which is what this art's based off of, you're gonna be paying like eight, nine dollars, which is not cheap, right? So it's nice that this has been included. Uh, again, financially, it's not the biggest card in the set, but it is one of the cards that a lot of newer players just don't have in their collection. They would like to use it because it is fantastic in every format it's ever been legal in. So this is a card that can see play in Vintage, Legacy, Modern, uh, Commander, as well as even other cubes and such. Just you name it, it's fantastic. Sorry, Standard and Popper, I guess. <laughs> uh, Popper never saw a common version of it. But other than that, you can play this just about anywhere. A great card super versatile you'll be happy to pick it up in a draft it's going to do a lot not only to help you ramp but fix your colors next we have brush strider and i mentioned this earlier here's the other three one for two in green that we'll see and this one has vigilance again this is going to play best with the selesnia strategy but it's still a nice little beater and i've said this before you need two drops in limited so this is a two drop that you can pick up hopefully some point in the draft and it's going to help round out your curve nicely burgeoning another huge reprint uh, this came from stronghold it actually never saw a reprint this is the first time it's been reprinted so this is also the first time you can get it in foil this is a huge commander card in fact the stronghold version is a 25 dollar card because it is very heavily played in certain commander decks now last time in conspiracy we saw a reprinting of exploration arguably this is actually even better than exploration in certain situations this is an enchantment only costs one it sticks around whenever your opponent plays the land you can get some value out of it early game this thing can really let you have a fast start uh, phenomenal inclusion again another huge reprint for green Copperhorn Scout. Uh, this is a fine card. Not every deck's going to want this one. Again, this probably shines a little more in the Slesnia deck when you're going to be attacking a lot in a lot of different directions. Kind of gives your creatures a quasi vigilance. Uh, other than that, it's not super exciting. Certain decks might want to run one or two of these, uh, but a lot of decks probably a lot better things to do. 
Explosive Vegetation. Uh, this is just a ramp card that's going to help you also fix your mana. It's at the four spot. They don't want to necessarily give you a way to fix colors super early at the uncommon level, but this does pair very well with things like Birds of Paradise or some of the other cards we're going to see as we go forward. Uh, if you're really trying to go big into say four or maybe even five colors, this will help you do that. Fade into Antiquity. Now here's the thing that's funny about this set. There's not a whole bunch of amazing enchantments and artifacts. However, there's some strong ones that could really surprise you, especially in red. So you do have to remember, you don't sideboard in this format because you only play one really long game instead of a bunch of short games. So you don't have an opportunity to bring this in later, which means this is the type of card that you probably want to run a one of just to be safe. <laughs> you won't be surprised by things like gratuitous violence, for example, in red. You'll at least have an answer for it. Uh, and for that reason, this will be good. Again, you probably don't want multiples of this, but you want it as an answer. Forgotten Ancient. This is actually the first You Make the Card cards that they did on the Wizards website many years ago, where they let people vote for what type of card that they wanted to make and so on. And uh, this is the card we got. It's actually a great multiplayer card. It's maybe a little underwhelming in single player games, but in Commander this is strong and it will be good for you in the Conspiracy Draft too. Next we have Irresistible Prey, and this one's not super exciting for me. I mean, you put this on one of your creatures. You could put it on an opponent's creature too, I suppose, and it just would maybe mess up the game a little bit as far as attacks on blocks go. It does cost only one, it does replace itself, uh, but really, this is one of those cards that you just have to wait for the right time for it to be good, and sometimes it's okay, but you have to ask yourself, is it better just hold on this card and wait for a moment to strike or is it just better to have another card in my hand like a creature or something that could have done more and maybe was able to be deployed faster uh yeah so i think there's just better things you could be doing for the most part uh, there's a lot of powerful cards in this set lace with moon glove basically some green removal now it may cost you a creature but in a combat situation it takes a creature that normally would have just been a chump block turns it into a trade and you get to draw a card off of it so i'm okay with running uh, at least one or maybe even two of these in the deck lay of the land here's a cheap way at sorcery speed to get another basic land out of your deck and into your hand so this will do you a couple things it will help you make sure you don't miss land drops early on in the game but probably more importantly it's going to help you fix your colors again if you're going deep with colors this will be a good card for you Manoplasm. It's a nice little beater. I mean, it feels a little fragile as a 1-1 one, one for 3. That doesn't feel great. But from that point forward, whenever you cast a spell, it gets a nice boost. You can attack in. Granted, it doesn't have evasion, but hopefully you'll be playing some pretty big spells in this format. Some 5, 6 casting cost spells. And this could be a nice beater in those games. Nessian App, another monstrosity card, works very well with the monstrosity that we saw in Gruel, but this really wants to be part of that ramp strategy too. What's nice about this is it's a 4-5 or five with a reach for 5, so I like those stats even on their own, but then on top of that, later in the game, I can go ahead and make this even bigger. Now, there's not a lot of huge flying threats in this game, but there's a few. Uh, blue has a notable one, white's got a lot of smaller flyers, so it's nice to have something that can deal with those threats. Netcaster Spider. Speaking of something that can deal with flying threats, this is actually a really good card. I don't mind paying 3 for a 2-3 in general, plus I get all this upside with this card. It gets reach, and if I happen to block a flyer, it gets plus 2, plus 0. Oh. This is another one of those cards that's going to encourage folks with flyers to just not bother with you. They're just going to attack somebody else, and that alone, having this on the battlefield, will be worth 3 mana. Overrun. This is kind of a classic finisher from a number of years ago. For a while, this thing was showing up in every single core set at Uncommon, and it just felt like when you could like draft it or put it in your seal pool, it was just like your win condition. This is extremely powerful <laughs> if you've never played with it. And it's good in the decks where you're going with big creatures. It's good in the decks where you're going wide. It's just good if you have creatures. And it's strong enough that this could probably take out two opponents simultaneously under a lot of circumstances. This is the type of card that might be a little bit better in a single player game. But if you hang on to it until a few opponents go out, this could still be a finisher. Plummet. Again, I mentioned there's a few flying threats in the set. Maybe not as many as other sets. You don't necessarily want to run a whole bunch of these. It is a common, so watch out how many you end up with. But running at least one of these is probably good for your own protection. 
prey upon. Another piece of green removal, this one at common. And you're going to notice there's a lot of strong removal in this set at common. We saw Flame Slash yesterday. The day before, we saw both Murder and Death's Wind. They're not playing around when it comes to removal in this set. And this is green's opportunity to get something strong at the common level. Ravenous Lucrocota. Now, this is another monstrous creature. And it's, I mean, nothing to write home about. It has Vigilance. It's a 2 4, so the stats are just fine. And when it becomes bigger with Vigilance, yeah, it's a nice little beater. So, again, it's not a card that is super flashy or anything, but it gets in and will do the job. Strength in numbers. A very good combat trick slash way to sometimes even finish off an opponent. First off, if they're attacking in, you can use it as a combat trick, but where this is really going to shine, of course, is if you're attacking with a big creature and then you're able to give them the boost and trample, you could really take out an opponent with this card. It's actually pretty awesome. Sylvan Bounty. Now that ability isn't super exciting, but the reason you want to play this sometimes is the basic land cycling. Again, this is a way to fix that mana. So if you're going four colors, five colors, then yeah, this will be a fine card for you to keep in your deck. And if you've already fixed your mana later in the game, the ability is not horrible. It's just not super exciting, but it's definitely worth running in your deck if you need to smooth your land. Voyaging Seder, another small creature. I mean, basically this is kind of like a mana dork for two. And even though it does untap a land, which means it could do more things than just simply untap a land for mana, uh, usually that's what it's gonna be doing. And this again will be another fine ramp creature for you. Wild Pear, another exciting reprint. This one's actually a fun card. I really like the art on it as well. Uh, this one's a rare, another six drop though. A lot of great six drops. And this is going to be really good in Conspiracy. Now, sometimes this card's a little better if you can construct your deck more like in Commander, for example, or else it's also very good in cubes. Uh, but it is a lot of value to be had here. So you'll be very happy to play this in the format for sure. All right, let's move on to some multicolor cards. We're gonna look at the Lone Simic card. This is also a reprint, it's Coiling Oracle. And if you've ever played with this card before, you know this is value. It costs two for a one one, which feels a little awkward considering it's two different colors, but then you're either drawing a card or you're putting a land from the top of your deck into play. Yeah, huge, huge value, fantastic card. And finally, our last card of the day, it's a reprint as well. It's a Selesnia card from Cold Snap. Juniper Order Ranger. Uh, this is another really strong card, and this does exactly what the Selesnia deck's trying to do, playing a lot of small creatures and just making them slightly bigger. And they use that melee mechanic that is just that much more of a punch to it. Uh, this is a fine card, and again, another card that could run away with the game if left unchecked. So you get yourself a 2-4 for 5, sure, but now every time you play a creature after that, this gets a plus 1, plus 1 counter, and that creature gets one. That's actually kind of awesome. So this will be phenomenal. This is also a very good commander card and also a good cube card. I've never seen this in a cube that I remember, but it's definitely cube playable, I think. So having said that, those are all the green cards. <laughs> so we've made it through the entire color pie. We're going to be back one more time. We're going to look at all the colorless cards tomorrow. So we'll be looking at the lands, the artifacts, and also the colorless conspiracies that you'll find within the set. So until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. This video, like all my videos, was made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Even a donation of a dollar helps me to keep growing this community and creating better quality content for all of you. Check out our Patreon page for exclusive giveaways and future goals for the channel. If you haven't yet had a chance to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, product openings, or finance videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.